Now, if you're in a place where enough's enough, we feel like something in your life needs to change now. You're recognizing that you're making the same mistakes and going down the same paths over and over again. If you feel like you're sabotaging yourself or abandoning yourself for the sake of others, if things are too overwhelming and you just want to escape, then you're in the right place. I'm going to explain to you why it's overwhelming. I'm going to explain to you what's happening in your internal world, which is causing you to feel powerless. By understanding that, it will carve out a much clearer path for you to go down so that you can become the most authentic version of yourself. The version of yourself that can achieve the goals you set for yourself. The version of yourself that isn't stuck in suffering and won't keep abandoning yourself for the sake of others. The version of yourself that's confident and can find safety in prioritizing yourself and your own needs. The version of yourself that is good enough to be loved and can create a wealth of abundance. And the only way to get to that place, no matter what path you go down, is by raising your self-awareness. Self-awareness and knowing how to raise it is one of the most valuable things for a conscious being in this lifetime. To understand yourself at the deepest level is actually how you become the version of yourself that you want to be. In this video, I'm going to show you why things are the way they are. I'm going to explain to you what you need to do in order to get to your true peace, your true happiness, and feel that love you desire within yourself. I'm going to explain to you in detail what letting go means and how to start doing it. We're also going to talk about the misconceptions out there, which is what actually causes you to remain in your suffering instead of helping you grow. So let's understand why things are the way they are and how you can start to create the life that you want. The main reason you are stuck is because what you've been told the journey should look like. But that's not your fault. This isn't about blame. Everything I speak about in this video is to bring these things to your awareness. You've heard it many times in many places before. You have to forgive. We've all heard it before. You have to forgive them for what they did. No, you don't. You really, really don't. This is one of the most misunderstood parts of the self-development journey. To tell you that you have to forgive your abuser is one of the most invalidating things you will ever be told in your life. No human being on this planet can forgive for simply wanting to forgive. Forgiveness isn't actually the goal. It's not what we're reaching for. The actual goal is letting go. And I hear you, trust me, I've been there myself. What does that even mean? What is letting go and how do I do it? I'm going to give you a detailed, in-depth explanation of exactly what letting go means and how to do it. How to do it so you can get to a place of finally feeling that love from within, feeling your joy, getting to your happiness. We as humans are conscious emotional beings. We're relationally dependent species, we're herd species, and we're social creatures. We are creatures of needs. That means as a species, we have needs that need meeting. One of our needs is the need for food and water. If I don't eat any food all day and it's the evening, then my need for food is much greater. I will feel hungry. That's a feeling within myself that I can recognize. And let's say my partner asks me, do you want to watch a movie? The decision I make in that moment and how I will act will be completely dependent on my unmet need for food in that moment. I will feel hungry. That will dictate my decision. I might say, instead of watching a movie, let's go out and get something to eat because I'm starving. Because my need for food is much greater and I'm feeling it. But if I had breakfast, a big lunch and snacks throughout the day, I might say, sure, let's watch a movie now and maybe get a bite to eat later. My entire behavior and decisions will be different depending on my need for food and water. Now, that's my need for food and water. We have so many other needs. We are creatures of needs. We are emotional beings. Our emotional needs are the most important needs for us to meet. We have a need for connection. When we are born, we 100% rely on our caregivers for our survival. Without them, we're dead. An infant cannot survive on their own. Our need for connection actually plays the biggest role for our survival because as newborn infants, we cannot survive on our own. This is why we are a relationally dependent species. We depend on others in order to survive. This is how we work. And if the need for connection is being met, then we are surviving. So everything feels okay. And this isn't physical connection. I'm talking about emotional connection. Now, if I don't have that emotional connection, then I will feel not having that emotional connection. Just like the way that I could feel the way I did 
when I was hungry. Emotional connection is actually more important for a human being's survival than food and water. Just like my decision to go out and get something to eat instead of watching a movie was my way of meeting an unmet need for food and water, we make decisions and have behaviors because we're trying to meet the emotional unmet needs that we have. We're actually doing this unconsciously. The only thing is we've been taught how to meet the need for food and water and it's very self-explanatory, but you've never learned how to start meeting the unmet needs you have for emotional connection. And I don't mean just connection with others. I mean the connection with yourself. That's a big reason why you feel stuck because you have unmet needs in your internal world that you are constantly trying to meet from your external world. This is why you abandon yourself because that's the way you get the crumbs of connection from other people. That connection you desire is their acceptance. By behaving a certain way, they'll accept me, which means I have that connection. And I've learned that's better than not having the connection at all, because not having the connection takes me towards feeling annihilation. And annihilation is death. I would rather get what I can get instead of feeling annihilation over and over again. So let's understand what letting go is and how to do it. Let's talk specifically about the people pleaser parts of us. As a child, we're brought up in our first social circle, which is our family circle. And because we live in a time where society doesn't understand how to be there for each other in an emotionally healthy way, our upbringing has been very emotionally neglectful. This has been the same throughout the generations. So our caregivers also didn't have emotionally healthy upbringings either. In a moment where one of my caregivers would be angry or sad or frustrated or upset in any way, that had a negative outcome for me. Let's say that at that moment, my father was angry and it could be for any reason. It doesn't even need to be angry at me. It could be angry at my mother or something on the TV or my auntie, his sister. Whenever he was angry, it was unsafe for me. In those moments, he might pace around the house and be aggressive, or he might even slam doors and shout. And because those behaviors would make a child feel unsafe, in those moments, I might go to him to feel safe. And at that moment, I'm trying to meet my need for safety. And my father is obviously the one I go to because he's my caregiver. But because he is in his anger, his response might be something like, just leave me alone. Give me some time to myself. You're so needy all the time. Do something yourself. And in that moment, I'm rejected. I'm not getting the connection that I need. And this is one of the most important things to become aware of. So really, really, really this. In these situations, as well as so many other experiences throughout our lives, we learn that I'm not important because I'm rejected. I'm not important because I'm not loved. This is now a belief of ours. This belief of not being important is backed up throughout my entire life experiences where my needs are not met. And as an adult, this belief of not being important is the reason we don't invest in ourselves. It's why we don't choose ourselves first. It's why it's so much easier for us to invest in others ahead of ourselves. But Let's go back to the example and at that moment. After being rejected and not getting the connection I need, now I'm learning that every time he gets angry or upset, I can't get my need for connection, love or safety met and I'm rejected. This is why I feel annihilation. This is very unsafe for me. And then later he calms down. He's not angry anymore. He gives me the attention I need. He might even hug me. Now I'm getting the love that I need, the connection I need. It's much safer when he's not angry or upset. This whole experience has taught me something. It's taught me that when someone is angry or upset, it's unsafe for me. But when they're happy and not upset or angry, it's safe for me. So I adopt a behavior that's going to keep me as safe as possible. I've learned that when others are happy or pleased, then I'm safe. All I need to do is make sure that people are happy. Then I'll always be safe. This new behavior is something that's within me now. And I'm completely unaware of this behavior. It's just running in the background, keeping me safe, doing its job. So as an adult, I will be with friends, my family or work colleagues, and I'll still be unconsciously behaving the way that I learned kept me safe. I will please everyone. And because this is how I know to keep myself safe, I abandon myself to please others all the time so they don't get angry at me because I've learned that works. So in this example, what am I letting go of? As a child, 
I learn to meet my unmet need for love and connection by pleasing others. That's the unhealthy way of meeting an unmet need. What am I letting go of? I'm letting go of the way I have learned to meet that unmet need. If in the moment, I become aware that I'm pleasing someone else, which is how I stayed safe, and then I don't please that person, I will feel the fear or the sensation of anxiety that comes from the parts of myself that experienced unsafety and annihilation from the original experience where I learned that I have to please people in order to stay safe. Someone being around me and just being upset or angry will trigger that fear, that unsafety feeling within myself. And I will automatically go into the behavior that has always kept me safe, which is to please the angry person, to stop them from being angry or upset. The way I let go of my behavior of pleasing others is that I go towards and understand these parts of myself that feel fear when I'm around people who are angry or upset or annoyed or frustrated. Those parts of myself are the parts that have the unmet needs, the unmet need for love and connection. So I take on these parts and meet their needs in a healthier way. I give the love these parts are looking for myself. That's how I can start loving myself. I give the safety that these parts of myself have been looking for myself. And the more I do this, the more I meet my own needs, the same situations will not make me feel the same anymore. So I will be with someone that feels angry or sad or frustrated, and I won't need to please them anymore. I won't mind if they think badly of me because I said no to something they asked, which will make them feel annoyed at me for it. And because I'm not feeling the fear from those unmet needs, because I'm meeting them now, I won't abandon myself anymore because I'm starting to feel okay with myself because I'm meeting those unmet needs. We try to meet our unmet needs in many ways. Resentment is another way. Resentment is our way of protecting our hearts. It's like a reminder that no one's ever going to do this to me again. And I always say resentment is kind of like the cousin of anger. At the core of whatever we're using resentment for is because of unmet needs. And resentment is our way of keeping ourselves away from the pain of those unmet needs. And if I start to meet those unmet needs more and more, I will naturally let go of the unhealthy way that I've been trying to meet those needs, which is resentment. And if I'm letting go of resentment, then I'm not resenting anymore. And if I'm not resenting anymore, another way of saying that is I forgive. Forgiveness is not the goal. It's the outcome of the goal, which is letting go. You let go by learning how to meet your unmet needs in a healthier way. This is why no one can forgive for just choosing to forgive. You have to do the work. You have to connect with these unconscious parts of yourself that you are unaware of and learn how to meet their unmet needs. This is how you come out of your suffering. Continuing to do what you've been doing this whole time will keep you in the same place that you're already in. This is the difference between living in reactivity and living in awareness. By living in reactivity, which is what living in survival is, you are living unconsciously. It's like having clouded goggles in your reality. You're not able to see things for what they truly are. It's about learning how to start seeing the things you are unconscious of. You already have everything you need to get to where you want to get to. You just need to learn how to use everything you already have. You have your feelings. You have your emotions. These parts of you have constantly been trying to communicate with you so that you can meet your unmet needs and integrate them. But you've never known this and never known how to do it. Once you learn how to do it and start putting that into practice, your entire reality will shift and change. This is what it is to come out of living in reactivity or in survival mode. You don't know what you don't know. And because your reality is what it is, it's so hard to see what you can't see. This is why self-awareness is so important. So you can start seeing what you can't see. So you can remove the scales that are clouding your vision. And you do that by learning how you work as an emotional being. Learning that when you're triggered to feel an emotion, that's communication. Learning what that communication is and how to take that. You're not just feeling an emotion, you're communicating to yourself. For the people that follow me and see me regularly say my most famous quote, which is how you feel is correct 100% of the time. This is why, because it's all a communication. And if you're continuing to just live in the reactivity 
or survival without doing the exploration and becoming aware of it and integrating it, then you're at the mercy of your pain. Anyone who's living in reactivity is easily influenced. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, but I don't understand it. I can't do that. I can't get to where I want to get to. This is exactly where I was as well. I'm telling you that I am proof that you can get to where you want to get to. The only reason, and I mean the only reason that you believe you can't is because of the life experiences that you've had, which is what has created that belief in you. You absolutely can because it's how you work and no one can take that away from you. The entire reason I created my inner awareness framework was so that people can learn how to become aware of these parts of themselves, to be able to integrate any aspect that comes to their awareness so that you can claim the power that you are looking for and live the life that you want to live. I've worked with so many different people that have all been on very different parts of the journey and had very different ways of learning. And I'm here to tell you that every single person can do this, including you, because it's how you work. Become aware that the only reason that you doubt yourself is because of what you've been through, not who you are. It's not about what's wrong with you. It's about what happened to you. The only reason you don't choose yourself or invest in yourself is because of what you've been through, not because of who you are. My job is to empower you and I don't do that by giving you power. I do that by showing you that that power has been there this whole time within yourself. When you come out of living in reactivity, when you remove that clouded vision, when you learn how to connect with these parts of yourself, you stop abandoning yourself. You start choosing yourself. You validate your experience. You find your power. That is is what empowerment is. It's not just to say it. It's not just to act like you are empowered. The way you feel empowered is by doing the work. It's to do the work and feel it. The way out of suffering is to learn how to become aware of and meet any and all unmet needs that you can. And let me tell you now, even though time has its place in your self-development journey, time doesn't heal your wounds. That is not how it works at all. Because time doesn't start meeting your unmet needs. All time does without doing the work is it makes you really, really good at becoming unconscious and unaware of your pain. And we see that and interpret that to, oh, I'm starting to feel better. No, it's just I'm not as aware of my pain. And if you're unaware of any part of yourself, then you're unconscious of it, which is the opposite of being aware. This is why self-awareness is so important because the path is not to ignore or reject any of these parts. That's how we continue living unconsciously and in reactivity. It's not to distract yourself from it. It's to do the exact opposite. It's to go towards it and understand it, to integrate these parts of yourself. This is why my inner awareness framework is so successful with the students that have taken my course, because it's based on how you work emotionally. Your reality is yours, no one else's. By remaining where you are and doing the same thing over and over again, you will get the same outcomes over and over again. You will attract the same kind of partner over and over again. You will get the same kind of job, even though you truly don't like it over and over again. You will remain in your suffering. There is no future. There is no past. There is only the present moment. The future is a thought. If I simply don't think about whatever I am in the future, the future doesn't exist. To wait and finally do this work sometime in the future is how we hold ourselves back from doing this work in the new present now moment. It makes sense not wanting to go towards your pain when you've never been taught how to deal with it. But you're at a place now where you can learn and be able to be there for these parts of yourself, to be able to be there for yourself in ways that no one else has ever been able to be there for you. And the way that you've always been looking for and needed is so normal to be scared of the unknown, but it's not actually the unknown that you're scared of. It's your perception of the unknown that you're scared of. It's thinking that it will be a specific outcome, which is actually based on your past experiences from the parts of you that are trying to keep you safe through fear. But that means you're living in fear. Playing it safe in that way keeps you living in fear. 
You're not incapable just because you're having these thoughts or doubts. This whole thing, these thoughts and the doubts you're having is actually part of the journey. It's just about deciding what to do at this stage of your journey.